Hey guys, welcome to Isaiah's Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the Lidesto W2 All-in-One Station. This is a robot vacuum cleaner. You can see it docked down here. Here's the station. It's a pretty good size. This is a special day. This is a special product on a special channel, of course, but I've been hinting at something big and juicy coming. It's this guy right here. This thing can use LiDAR, which is the best mapping a robot vac can have right now. I, I, I would take LiDAR over actual camera mapping and stuff like that. And dumb robots don't have LiDAR and they just run around in circles and do different things and miss everything. But this one collects a lot of stuff and it does a lot of sweet stuff in this station. It will suck out all the debris that it collects in its bin. There's a catch. When you want to mop with it, it also will circulate clean water through and over those mop heads and suck it up into a sump tank on the other side, on the left side, which you can see here, clean water, your dustbin, and your sump tank. So it'll actually circulate clean over it, take it over here to the sump, agitate those brush heads, clean it off. Uh, it uses hot water. Use hot air to sterilize the brushes after it's done and dry completely dry those pads off. Hot water, hot air, self-collecting everything. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, right now it's on Kickstarter and the price is very appealing. I would tell you to run and get it because the price that they want for all of this is the price for just a lot of our vac that doesn't self-empty doesn't mop with turning mop heads and it sure doesn't clean out have a sump and completely dry and sterilize with hot air but we're going to get to the proof that's in that pudding but right now we're going to go over some specs i highly suggest right now that you go down to the youtube description and click the link to the kickstarter campaign and watch the minute and 16 second video that they have it's a super quick rendering of all the internals and what's going on come back after you watch that because that'll give you a good uh, idea of what we're talking about and we're going to go into great detail uh, about this thing because i've had it a week now uh, i've probably done over 30 runs of this thing so probably a couple months worth of work uh, in, in five days i've lived and breathed nothing but this device trying to make sure I find everything that's wrong with it uh, and everything that's right with it. And then I'll come to my conclusion at the end, but let's go over some specs. The Super Early Bird is 659, Early Bird is 679. The Super Early Bird for two stations uh, is 1299, and the Early Bird for two entire units is 1349. And you can do the add-ons, which I would do the $80 add-on to get two times everything, you get two years worth of supplies. I would just do that for the bags and stuff alone. Just so you know, I do have some B-roll footage that I will include, but I filmed so much stuff. Um, I hope I don't miss anything <laughs> trying to go through and find the stuff that I have. Uh, there's a colored LED display in here, which will showcase everything that it's doing and what's going on with the robot, which is very cool. Uh, I store these mop heads here whenever I'm not using them. They slide right in, plastic piece down, right inside, perfect. And these are dry as a bone. And I use, I've been using these two, two times a day, testing or so, to do the entire house. And this is the condition of them, probably, I don't know, 15, 16 runs in the house. So they still look pretty good. So here's your fresh water tank. There you go. I did a whole house mop today told me to put it back in there quit messing with it here is the sump right there I don't know if you see anything floating around in there but it always produces dirt out of all the times I've been using it in like five days it always produces dirt I'm gonna pull this up via this side here because basically what you would do is pull this tab up it seals off the hole and you just toss it but as you can see in there it's pretty full as is it's crazy uh, how much it gets but here is a piece down here 
you'll clean this little cover out and then there's a vent down in there and of course there is a seal here a little gasket here that uh, comes out and goes down into these grooves to help seal this compartment off for suction and that's that uh, here is some to clean come home to uh, clean the mop heads or prep them and take out the dust bin and here's the robot unit itself you do get sensors yeah thank you here's your charging connectors back here this is where it sucks the port that will suck out into the bin the bag big sensor back here bumpers speakers airports uh, bumpers here sensors over there this is where it turns into a typical lidar robot i do like the fact that it has two brush heads here in the front once we open up the hatch here now we have our dust bin which you can pull right out here it is uh, here's the door which whenever it sucks it just springs this open and sucks right out and this is how it collects through here which has got a little flapper gate right there so the robot's vacuuming them up and sucking up through that and going into this container here's your air filter here uh, i do like how they have a separate bin for your filter so you can change that out or clean it out and put it back in there that's good so you don't even really you never really have to remove this so that's a good thing that's kind of everything that's under here a little barcode there now we're going to get into the meat here uh, this is a little turn wheel here here's your kicker wheels in there to kick bigger debris over into this guy here hefty height here great resistance on the spring uh, these posts these metal posts here are where these this is cool where these will magnetize right on boom and it's on boom and it's on ready to go see it enters mopping mode automatically take it off automatically detects when you take one off you're out of mag you're out of mopping mode so this is typical but this is cool see this this is usually what's right side up this will hang down a little bit to retain suction and this kind of hangs down and rides along through all the bumps and stuff and then you have these flaps to the front and back to try to maintain that constant level of suction across a bare floor, floor or car carpet so that is very nice peel this off lift this up i clean these bristles off with the tool i've had better tools i think this is where they kind of skimped a little is on the brush heads the only part i'm kind of not disappointed in but they could have been went a better route on the engineering of the brush just for one see these little bits of hair it's hard to get those out because usually there's a recess point in here that you can get the hook of the tool in there and pull the hair up and slice it off with the razor that's uh, etched into the tool. Uh, it doesn't have that, so it's hard to get that off. You can get everything else off, but it has a brush on one, one end, and I like actually a hard comb to, to clean these bristles out instead of just some kind of soft brush. It's no big deal. You can always get a tool of your own, and I've got a bunch of tools because I went through a bunch of robots reviewing them and just owning them. So I've owned over a dozen. So uh, other than that, though, the brush is okay but I just don't like the design of getting the hair out of here. That's about it. And also there's some felt pads here. So nothing scrapes anything. And these are recessed to where they're below this ridge here and here and below this plastic piece. So this will come into contact with anything before this will. This is a good bit lower than this. Uh, so you're, these are okay. It's not gonna damage anything. It hasn't with me anyway. And uh, drop sensors here, so it will not fall over a ledge. Carpet sensor, so it can detect carpet. There you go. Okay, so this is what a couple of months of debris will look like down in there. And don't worry, because there's two clips on each side of this tray here. You push them in, this whole thing slides out. 
So you can take it to the sink and clean it completely up and it comes with a brush and all that stuff to, to do it. Um, hot water dispenses down through here. Agitator lips here where it will spin when it's in cleaning mode. Agitate across each one of these. Uh, hot air dispenses out of here, dries them completely off. Uh, while this thing, it doesn't turn while it's drying, but it's, it's really quiet when it's drying. Uh, I think it has a night mode of drying, but it's not anything that you'll need. Charging connectors there, sump pickup there, um, the vacuum seal here, which is rubber board here to seal around the plastic piece on the back of the robot. Uh, it does agitate and turn while this hot water is coming down through here. There's pads here, protect the robot when it comes up to charging. Wheels here on each side as well. So it's very well, this is very well thought out. The wheels slide into this divot. That's where it knows it's in place. Um, so it will connect to the per perfect spot every time. Uh, it's a very good design. A sensor up in there, little charging port thingies up there. I think I pointed down there early, earlier. And then up there. Um, but yeah, this looks good. This is easy to clean. Like I said, two drying ports, two water ports, sump. Very good, simple design. Lip here, catch any liquid that would come out and fill up. And also, I believe those are moisture detectors, maybe. When that does fill up, it will stop pumping. So if this did stop up, it should not overflow. Just a note, there's some sensors here and on the other side too. And it does request that you place this with ample room on each side, which I did not do at first. At first, placed it over here, uh, ran that for maybe a couple days. And it just would maybe come back, would not. I was kind of disappointed in the unit, to be honest, at that point. But I didn't follow the directions. So once I tried resetting the map. Didn't work when I moved it here. It still thought the base unit was here. Had to do a complete factory reset. When I did that, it recognized the home position was here. Acted correctly. So whenever you do this, make sure, and I'll say this a bunch of times, but make sure that you set it up in its per permanent spot. And we'll get into how to figure that out. Coming up, resetting this up was a pain to me because you're supposed to hold the home and power button down for three seconds. I was waiting on an acknowledgement, which crept me over to the five seconds, which then five seconds holding it down, uh, resets it to work with another app outside of the Lidesto Sto app, which is what you want to use. Most of the time you want to use it, but you could work with the Mijo, Mijon app, I think it's called, uh, which is another home goods app or something like that a suite of electronics can work with it but we don't really use that in the u.s so you would want the lidesto app three seconds you count three seconds don't wait on an acknowledgement once you do that it, it resets it into that mode and then you can use that app and it connects no problem at all you'll connect it up to your 2.4 gigahertz uh, router uh, it's really easy and basic after that uh, but make sure off the bat you put it enough space on each side enough area for the robot to get to it and you're buying this for the mopping function make sure you put it in the biggest area that it, it will mop because it's not going to go over carpet to get to another area to mop we'll get into that juiciness later too but keep that in mind let's move on to the Lightsto app which you will download and use this with uh, as you can see here, it's mapped out my entire home. Um, it will do these rooms by itself, but you can merge, you can divide, you can go in there and really fine tune it, which is what, exactly what I had to do. You need to give yourself like a full week of messing with this and getting fully com comfortable and confident with it uh, to pull off perfecting it, I promise. Uh, annoy your family you will but use it use it use it perfect it perfect it you get it down you forget it and you'll never have to worry with it again which is a plus but here i've separated out combined from what it did because i think it uh, my living rooms where the red couches are which are no-go zones because my couch is just high enough 
for it to go under there and kind of get stuck. So I'll put those no-go zones in there. Orange squares are no mop zones. Uh, the two on the top left are runners. Um, it gets between the runner and the wall and just gets itself stuck because of the carpet sensor on it. It will not go over carpet while mopping, but it gets in there, it wiggles its way somehow in between a wall and the runner, gets stuck. So we took that completely out of the mix. Um, so if you're worried about getting to places, I highly suggest picking up the Deluxe Bona mop, which uses their solution, their quick drying solution, which is nice. It squirts, you got a super mega wide head on it, squirt, squirt, wipe, dries, it's super fast and great, affordable. You can find them on silver once in a while and they're probably in your a local store somewhere. Anyway, so we got that. Um, you got room cleaning on the lower left. You can select that, actually select a room that you want to clean and then multiple rooms and it will go in order. Take that off, you can spot clean. You can select a spot for it to clean. We'll say select a spot. And then you go boom. And then we'll take that off. But that's spot clean. So you got a mess. Spot clean. I want to spot clean that. Boom. Lower left. See it? Close that up. Get out of here. Get there. Take that back off again. Uh, area. Then I'll move this up to the right. And you can resize that. Whatever size to clean that area. You can add an area too. Boom. Uh, map editor. This is forbidden zone settings, which is what we have. You can add up a vir virtual wall, which is just a line, but you can create that wall where it doesn't pass by that wall. Um, you can add sweeping restricted area and a no-go zone for mopping. So you can add those. The sweeping restricted areas in red, and like I said earlier, the mopping's in orange. Get out of that firm uh, mode settings, which is the fan in the lower right. You got max settings and uh, the sleep time setting, which is the lowest. Now I did a decibel reading for the lowest and the loudest. Uh, those are on the screen. You can do a secondary cleaning pass and this is cool. Um, it'll go around the entire room and create a border all around the outside and then fill in like you're using a push more or something like that, back and forth, back and forth to fill in. Uh, when you do a secondary pass, it will go the other direction, which is really nice. Uh, you can just do manual mopping mode, a custom mode, or you can set up modes for each area, something like that. I never used that. Uh, we'll go up to the three lines up at the top right. And cleaning reservations, you can set a schedule up there, which I never do. I want to be in total control. We have two little kids. God knows it can tear up a playroom, I'm sure. Uh, remote controller, uh, you can bring it off, you can hit start, it'll do its thing, come off the dock station. I found out, this is important, that if you want to mop another section, that's why I said you want to put this in an area with the largest mopping surface for that to be its living place. Because say you've got a hallway, a bathroom that you want it to mop. Once you get it off the base in mopping mode, you can take it, put it in the bathroom and just hit start. And I found that being the best way to get it to mop that whole room is to just do it like that because it will start when you hit start. <laughs> but you also have controls that will kick it out of that auto start, just blind cleaning mode and actually run around. Um, and if you do that in C2 cleaning, I, hope I wouldn't sound like an idiot, but if you do that button down there, it'll spiral out. It'll take a little square spot clean wherever you set it. So say you don't want to do the spot clean on the map and you actually do want to just pick it up and carry it to a spot. It'll do that same size by pushing that button. It'll start out in the middle, go out, and do do do, and work its way in and clean. So, and uh, voice and volume, self-explanatory. There's all your languages that it has. Uh, 
back out. This has do not disturb mode, which is times of the day and stuff that you don't want it to operate in. Device sharing, if you have somebody you want to send this to. <clears throat> Auto boost, I have that on. Um, when it's in the quietest mode, I'm assuming this is what it's talking about. When it's in uh, quiet nighttime mode and it runs over carpet, it will automatically go to a carpet setting, which is really loud, which is probably its full speed, but 5,000 PA is where it's at on suction, uh, which is a lot, and I believe it uh, because I have some proof of that, and we'll get to that. Uh, avoid the carpet. You can turn on or off there. Base station setup. This is the mopping frequency with six minutes, nine minutes, and 12 minutes. I found out by far six minutes will keep the mop's heads moist. This is a trick. This is how it operates, if you're curious. So you have your mop heads on there. So get them wet, first time, go clean for six minutes. Come back, clean the heads off, put good clean water back on them, hot water, and go back where it left off for six minutes keep doing that back and forth back and forth I've never ran out of juice through the mopping I've only ran out uh, through full speed suction which I think there's a happy place in there that once you figure out what debris it will pick up on your surface on your hard surface because if mine's like a scraped wood look throughout so it has these little hills and divots so my floor probably needs the full suction to get all the debris out if you have a flat surface the way that that uh, uh, bin will, uh, that uh, roll there will go up and down with the terrain and keep a good suction, a good seal. The brush, so I was thinking, trying to think of it. The brush will stay down and on it and create a good seal and suck up. You could reduce your suction to, have, to extend your battery life and probably get the entire house in one go because that's what happens when I take it down to the lowest setting. You can do my entire house and I still got 50% left over. And that's with mopping too, because if it's just strictly mopping, it's not really sucking, but you can do both. You can create a high suction where it will suck and mop at the same time. All right, now we move down to water temperature mode. You do get room temp mopping as an option or high temperature mopping. I pick high temperature, but, it, but for some reason, if your floor is sensitive to temps, hey, it's an option. And uh, I also have some thermal images of the unit, the base station, um, when it's doing the hot water. And I've got a, a shot as close as I could get with a laser temp gun in there. I know it gets hotter where I couldn't, I couldn't get to it, but I got kind of roughly in there. We get it kind of, it is a high temp, so it is hot water. And also the drying mode here is next, which is silent drying or quick drying. I have it on quick drying and it's pretty silent. Like, I don't know what silent drying would sound like, but quick drying is, you can't really hear it. And I have those images of the temps and stuff for the quick drying, which it got hot, I think 108 degrees. That's pretty good. And then you can say collect dust immediately. I can just push it right now and collect dust. So let's go to the reset map. Oh, that's pretty self-explanatory. The manual is here, which is good. Your cleaning records, your consumables and maintenance, which it will show. When I did the reset and moved it, it reset everything. Um, so all this stuff is just reminders. It could be in good condition. Uh, firmware, no firmware available. It was a firmware update whenever I first got it. Um, start and send it back to the charge. So that kind of wraps up the app. I hope everything I've explained for you. If you've ever owned a robot vacuum cleaner, you're just really, need, the learning curve is the mopping part of it, is the, the learning curve, is figuring out how do I get this thing over a threshold of a rug and, and clean that section of the house. The answer, the best answer, it started out in the biggest section that takes the mopping. Move it over there to the remote section and hit start. That's what I've come up with. That could be changed through firmware. So let's get in to the pros and cons, shall we? The pros is 
I love the hardware of this thing. It works. The whole functionality up here, all this whole world that they've engineered out here, as simple as it is in order for them to get that cost down and pass that cost on to savings on to you over the competition, which might be a thousand, eleven hundred bucks, I would guess. You're almost at half the price, almost, which is good. I'm still sticking firm to if you can afford this and you might use the mopping, I'd get it, man, because it has kept this floor as clean as ever. And also, before I forget, I almost forgot, the mopping heads on this thing here uh, stay pressed down as well. Now the pickup roll, it rests downwards and rides along the surface. So does this, when it activates, it kind of rests down and rides along with it a little bit, which is fantastic. So it's able to get, you know, your scraped flooring or something like that that may not be perfectly flat, it's able to do that. But the downside to that is it's not able to go over rugs, carpet, or anything like that when it's in mopping mode. The other option would be it recognizes where a carpet is, lifts those things up and out of the way, and goes, goes into uh, just cleaning the, the rugs and stuff. But you're looking at this. And I'm, I'd, I'd much rather deal with this setup and physically pick it up and carry it to a bathroom or something or a hallway and run it when I want to mop it than deal with paying extra. Because for my setup, having every, the, the vast majority of the floor available to this to mop, it's a win for me. Um, so that's a definite pro is the mopping. The suction power is huge. It's double the, the heaviest suction one I've had in the past. I have a dozen or so vacuums. So the suction on this thing is amazing. It was able to get onto a high pile rug, like this high, like two inches, inch and a half. Man, the, the, the reach on this thing is crazy. Climbed up on, I've, I thought I've never owned a vacuum that could get onto this rug here. Usually it just skirts around it. That stuff sitting out, the kids have their toys out. And I'm like, it won't come up here. It came up there and it cleaned it completely. Cleaned it all around. I'll show you a picture of the map of where it's cleaned the house and stuff like that. Uh, I think of the map uh, that I'll show you here is the silent mode left with like 50 something percent battery. I think I, I took a screenshot of it after the fact. Uh, so I think it shows 100% charge, but uh, it takes about a full power. I uh, have, it does about two thirds of the floor of the entire house at full power all the time. And that's some strong suction. Like I said, getting up here, running around on the carpet. That was wild to me. That, that was wild, that was good stuff. Uh, so the mopping, the suction power, um, all that's good. All the hardware, all of the hardware is great and reliable, the way it's built, how it's uh, optimized for the best way to do it. The circulation, the sump tanks, the pickup, this, this thing pops out to clean, like all that, all of it's fantastic. All pros, some of the app pros. So there we go, price, pros. Let's get into the cons, which I'm gonna be very picky with because the cons can be changed through firmware. It gets a little clunky around some chair legs and some walls.
Uh, it's got the sensors and, the, and it's got the tools that it can smoothly do things because I've had all robots that can smoothly do things. This wants to kind of go in, go in, go in a little bit around rounded objects like this little ottoman over here or against the stone wall where the fireplace is. It kind of wants to go in, go in, go in as it's going down. It's not very confident of itself going in between a space that it has the room to go into, but it might think it doesn't. It's kind of like, ah, do I, can I go? And it freaks out and backs up or something like that and bumps the chair leg. So they can hone all that out through firmware, and I have no doubt they have other units. They should know this, but I think they will hone this out, and I would put my money on it that they will polish this out. Um, the app, in my opinion, needs some help tips uh, on there that can be turned off after you've learned the app. I think it needs to be overly simplified basically with pause and resume use more in the bottom right instead of just start 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 because sometimes when you start it wipes out the map and it will go pick up where it left off but all the map everything it's done gets wiped away because of a situation where it gets hung up something you got to do to it if you hit start again it will wipe out it should just be a strict play and resume kind of thing until the entire mission is accomplished and then you know return to home button should be down there instead of charge just little little words little things overly they, they probably need to kind of slightly overhaul the words and how things are laid out with helpful hints to activate to show you exactly what the engineers intended these functions to do and after you've learned everything you can go in there and just turn that off uh, i would suggest that um, it has a bulky base station. I love it, it doesn't bother me, but it needs space, it needs its space. Luckily it works out perfect for me, but I could see this not working for other people because of, how, of the bulk of it. So that's just something to be aware of. The dimensions and everything are on the link down in the YouTube description, so make sure to go through there and come through that page. And look at those dimensions before you order it, make sure it fits. Um, and like I said earlier, I mentioned here an overall smoothing out it needs an overall smoothing, smoothing out of the functions of the robot itself. A little clunky, a little bulky, the app as well. Just honing, just honing, but everything can be done with over the air firmware updates. Um, or not over the air, through your Wi-Fi. The water tank runs out, which it does, and it will, and it will surprise you. And it'll say, hey, I want to finish cleaning these uh, heads, these mop heads, but your tank just ran out and I ain't got no more water. It'll tell you that, it'll tell you when the sump's full, so you're protected there. But whenever you fill it up and put the water back in, it doesn't resume where it left off. And that's a problem that I think that they can address. Whenever that happens, the mop stuff that it was doing is wiped. So it should retain its map, all that information, and be able to resume. And it should say resume down there. Whenever you fill this up, boom, you hit resume on the app. It's going to pick back up on the cleaning of the heads. 
and then go back and also pick back up on the map instead of it also racing the map along with this. It's not good. And I think there needs to be a clear section on the app of relocating that mop, picking it up, putting it in another area, another room, another zone that's actually on the map and say mop here without it wanting to go back to the base station. It wants to go back to the base station, but it can't because there's carpet there. So sometimes you set it under here, okay, clean this area. And it goes, oh, I gotta go back to the base station. No, you just, I just took you from the base station where you've got wet, fresh set of mops, cleaned heads, wet, put over here, clean. For some reason, sometimes it'll wanna go back. So I think they need a clear button, a clear section on the front of that, that, hey, just mop this and, it, and it's meant to be picked up and put down and mopped and not return back to the base station. Uh, convert to American standard for your footage. So it'd be square foot and stuff like that. So, uh, and the brush rope cleaning, which I mentioned earlier is a con because it should have a little notch near the end where the hair gets wrapped in the groove, a little notch where that tool can get in there, cut it out and you pull that hair out. And also the tool should not have a brush head. It should be have a stiff comb so you could comb it through the brush roll and clean debris and stuff out of that. Also, I've got on here the no-go areas. You should be able to draw those down smaller than what it has the ability to do because right now I have a recliner over here that has an end table next to it. I've included the recliner and the end table, but it sticks out a little wider because I can't move that no-go any smaller. So I think they need to work on the sizing, resizing, and let you have full control over that space. And more of them, you get 10 uh, full, no map, no go zones and stuff on walls, all that figured in together. There's only 10. Uh, so I think it needs to be more. I've had more on other apps, so I know it's possible.
basically, who's this for? Well, it's for if you've got a lot of hard floor space. If you've got a lot of hard floor space, pick it up because it can mop. And you get top of the line suction power uh, to boot. So you, you're, you're killer. Two combinations for the price, for less than the price of one. Because that amount of suction with the auto dust bin will cost you more than this thing costs with the mopping capability and the heated water and the heated air, the color LED screen in the front. I mean, it looks nice. It will impress people when they come over. And I would buy this in a heartbeat still with the cons that I have. I know that list of cons was high, but I feel like I listed everything that I could find wrong with it for letting it consume my life for a week. I was just like, every day, every moment, do, 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 do. what is wrong with this thing? I've got to find out what's wrong so that it can be addressed before your Kickstarter packages arrive. This could all be voided. It could be fixed in the firmware. It's a beautiful thing, and I hope this video helps, and I hope you explode on that subscribe button and ding that dong so that you can get the next product right here on Isaiah's Reviews because this guy I'm sitting in, that's why I'm sitting in it. You're probably like, what are you sitting in a beach chair for? It's a beach rocker. The goodness of this review will be coming in October right after I get back from the beach. See ya.